Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Lena, and I was about to go on a solo road trip this weekend to Santa Cruz to go scuba diving, but the weather did not allow me to do that because the swell is going to be too big. Because I was about to go, I thought it would be a great time for me to give you 20 tips on what to bring, what to do, and what to prepare for your next solo road trip or road tripping adventure. Tip number one. My first tip is to prepare a playlist of podcasts, purchase or somehow download an audiobook or multiple, and to have a lot of music. I really like having different books depending on how I feel. Motivational books, history books, historical novels are my favorite. Um... <laughs> podcasts are great to learn things on the go. I really like listening to science podcasts or news podcasts or just anything. There's so many podcasts and music. We all like music, right? Tip number two is to make sure to have some kind of road. That's a horrible view. That knew I was good. This? Have some kind of roadside assistance like AAA or at least have a spare tire in your car so that you can be ensured that you will have some kind of backup if something happens. The longer road trip that you go on, the more likely that you will get into some kind of predicament where you might need roadside assistance. Number three, know how to change your own tire or at least have one of these fix a flat type formulas where you can inject into your tire if you have a hole in your tire and it'll seal the inside. Or you can know how to change it with a, and have a jack on hand. Tip number four. Do a basic checkup of your car before you go so that you can make sure your car is up and running. Check your oil and make sure that you have enough and make sure it has been changed recently enough according to your car's standards. Do things like add windshield wiper fluid and check your tire air pressure. And make sure you have enough tools for the road. Tip number five. Look for cool things to see along the way. You can look for places along the route that you need to take or look for destinations that you want to stop at and create your own route based on that. It could be worthwhile to go a longer route in order to see more amazing things. You can find top attractions using Google or you can find more unique and curious travel destinations using websites like Atlas Obscura. Tip number six, put together a timeline slash an agenda. This will help you make the most out of your time while you're traveling. Even if you would like to go with the flow on your trip, you can have an idea of what cities you would like to see, when you would like to see them by, and when you would like to get back by. Creating an agenda is the best way to see the most places while driving the least, and it's a good way to keep your trip productive and exciting. Number seven. Make sure that you are prepared and you bring anything that is special to the specific place that you're going. For instance, snow chains for the snow, or extra blankets for the cold, or extra water for a really hot location. Number eight, bring a cooler so that you can bring snacks and have cold drinks and cold hummus or whatever you would like. That way you can save money by not having to buy fresh food all the time. You can just keep it in the cooler. Ice is really easy to get at nearly any gas station, so you can be good to go. Number nine. I think it's a really good idea to bring some quarters for any parking meters you come across that don't take debit or credit cards, and also to carry some cash because you never know when you need some cash. Number 10. Make sure you have enough water for your trip and bring some snacks like protein bars or granola bars because even though it might not seem like you'll need them, trust me, there'll be a time when you're hungry and you'll be so grateful that you brought one of these. And just stay hydrated the whole time. You don't want to start feeling sick or have a headache. Mm. And so that brings me to number 11, which is to bring a towel or some paper towels You'll be happy that you brought some paper towels and a towel for any spills or any time that you need to wipe something up. Number 12. 
have some sort of self-defense. I carry pepper spray in my car. Sometimes I'll bring a knife if I am sleeping in my car. It's just a good way to make sure that you are able to defend yourself if something does happen that hopefully doesn't happen. Number 13, have something to cover your windows. I like to use this one for the front windshield and for the back ones, I've been using sheets with tape, but soon I'm going to be making some nice, like either like cardboard or some kind of sheet that will either um, suction cup to the window or Velcro. Number 14, keep some sort of flashlight or headlamps in your car. I actually have kept these headlamps in my car for a really long time now, basically since I've started solo road tripping and they're just really handy. <laughs> Number 15, bring a pillow and a blanket even if you're not sleeping in your car because naps in your car are amazing. And if you ever needed to sleep in your car, you can. Or you can just go all out and make a whole bed and have the best time ever. It's so comfy. Number 16. Always keep your phone pretty charged. You want to make sure your phone doesn't become dead or have a really low battery because the phone is the best way to get in contact with someone in case of an emergency and it's the best way to find places like places to eat, places to stay, etc. Number 17, stop and stretch often. It's good to take care of your body and stretch it out since you'll likely be sitting and driving a lot. Ideally, you want to stretch out your back so that it doesn't get stiff and stretch out your legs to loosen them up and give them better blood flow than they get when you're sitting in a chair. Number 18. Don't push yourself too hard and make sure you have enough time to rest. Sleepy driving is seriously dangerous driving. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says that sleepy driving is involved in 100,000 police reported crashes each year. So take a break and a little nap if you're feeling really tired. Number 19, make sure you have enough gas so that you have at least 100 miles until you reach empty. I think it's really important to keep your gas tank above whatever that is. For me, that's about a third of a tank. And so right now I'm good to go for a little while. You don't wanna run into a situation where you're on a stretch of road without a gas station anywhere nearby and you're running low. That's really sketchy and you can avoid that by keeping your gas tank above whatever amount you need. <laughs> Lastly, for number 20, I like to keep in contact with a friend or family member throughout my trip so that someone knows where I am at all times. You can either share your location with someone or just call someone every night or every day. Hey, what's up? Yeah, I'm just hanging out in my car. I'm shooting a video. I'm not talking to anybody. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you're new and hit the bell notification. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.